What is up, guys? My name is Meeps. Today, we are playing one of my absolute favorite ADCs and actually a champ that was highly requested by one of our subscribers in case sure. So first of all, thank you for that request. And if any of you guys have another one you would like me to do, please tell me in the comment section. But today we are, of course, playing none other than Kai'Sa. So Kai'Sa is, first of all, an extremely fun champion to play. I personally love her. I've played, I don't know, way too many games on her. And she's one of the champs that I just always come back to. Anyway, what I'm going to be doing in this video is we're going to be playing a game of, uh, of Kai's, of course. And I'm going to be walking you guys a little bit through my mind of what I think when I play Kai'Sa. I'm going to have a bit of fun. And uh, yeah, hopefully either you're going to be able to learn a lot, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate player on Kai'Sa. Or you're just going to have a lot of fun if you already know everything. So yeah, I hope this is an overall video that you guys are going to enjoy. So, without further ado, let's just jump down in lane and uh, have a bit of fun. I am playing this in a normal games because I'm heavily focusing on making this video somewhat interactive and fun and entertaining and all this. So, yeah, I'm not going to do perfect farm. I'm not going to 100% focus on perfect gameplay. We're just going to try and have a fun game. I'm going to make sure we get pretty decently fed and, uh, and I'm going to try and explain things. All right, so first of all, when you come in lane on Kai'Sa, just like any other ADC, we want to try and see if we can get the level 2 power spike. Uh, this might not be so easy. Um, against some things, it's literally just not going to be possible. I'm going to try and see if we can get it here. For those of you who don't know how you get the level 2 power spike, it's quite simply that we get level 2 before the enemy. Uh, but already at this point, it seems like if he uses his ability, it's going to be a bit hard. Doesn't seem like he's doing it. So I think we're going to reach level two about the same time. Nope, he's going to get it first. We're backing out. We can get that farm. I'm going to tell my mate here to back out. So when we don't get level two power spike, we're of course just going to back out and not take the fight. You are on any ADC or any bot lane, basically, more or less. If you get level two and your opponent or your opposing bot lane is level one, guess what? You're stronger than them. And you should just all in if you have the option of doing so. And a lot of people, if you play below gold and even like early plat, people might not know this, especially uh, around gold and plat. Most people should know this by now. But gold and all the way up to probably like gold two and gold one, people are most of the time, like 70% of the games, you're going to be able to pull off a kill at level 2 if you get it before you're posing uh, bot lane. Or even if you don't get a kill, you're going to get a ton of damage in and you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're pretty goldy for the rest of the lane. Alright, let's really quickly talk about some of the things that uh, Kai'Sa kind of struggles with. So, oh, I want to play in Pink Danger. We have Miss here. Um... Just so he's aware that they are maybe close to him. Okay. So I think there's vision in here now, most likely. All right. So Draven or Kaisa really struggles against champs like Draven. Oh, that's going to be a free kill, most likely. Oh, nope. Our jungle is coming in. They're not looking. We got all of their CDs there. That's great. Um, some of the things that Kai'Sa re really struggles with is, is things like uh, bullies, like ADC bullies, uh, like Draven. Oh, we're going to have another gang in here now. I don't think we're going to get anything. They have ordered. Um, is she really struggles against bullies early because she is a hyper carry. And what kind of categorizes a hyper carry is, generally speaking, are insanely good in late game. Generally, not so good early game. I would say that Kai'Sa is pretty probably one of the best if not the best uh hyper carry in early game like she's really she's actually not that bad in early game you can once you really learn her you can consistently win the early game pretty easily uh you know what let's actually yeah let's grab that let's grab a potion i would have wanted a control warp that's too late now all right but quite consistently you can do really well with her in early game what you need to do in order to do this is basically you need to learn how to use your Ikarthian rain properly. 
Um, and this is one of the things I see most Kaiser players really, really not doing, even at higher elos. And that is that your Carthian Rain basically can hit anything inside this circle. It 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 kind of just distributes the missiles between all targets like this. But here's the thing: your positioning can totally change how this ability works. Because if you go down here, then you can see right now, if I go here, I'm only going to hit one target. And this is what you want to think about when you're playing against your enemies. You want to position such that you can burst down your enemies. So either it only hits the two enemy champions or ideally probably just one. So you can burst them down really freaking quickly. Um, and this is actually something a lot of people don't do on Kai's. And I see this so often that people are just popping their Q and there's a ton of minions around when they could move two feet to the side. And the way you can move to the side is you can utilize your supercharge. Uh, your supercharge, generally speaking, you don't want to be using it to... Uh, whoop. You don't want to be using it... Whoop, I'm going to flash him. I'm not going to be able to do much here, but I'm, I'll get that guy down and then we can run. Popping some potions, so hopefully that's going to increase our odds of getting out. Uh, Jane is getting close to four shot. We got out of that. That was kind of dangerous. So I'm actually happy with that outcome. I don't want to back here. I don't want my Cho to do that either because we actually have LeBlanc coming down here. I'm going to pop some potions. Uh, Cho has TP. I, I guess he's back. <laughs> I did not know he was uh, TP. Yeah, this is what happens when you go into a normal game and explain things. <laughs> People do weird stuff. <laughs> All right. Nice. All right, that was pretty good. I was a little slow on that engage, but it, it worked out all right. Um, but yeah, your your positioning on Kai'Sa is everything. Something you want to really avoid doing is once you are in auto attack range and you're hitting your enemies, then really think about how you use your oh how you use your supercharge because this is also a place where you can really easily kind of fail it. Um, this guy's overplaying. I'm backing out. I can't do this. There, nope, 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 nope. There's a full bond. Like I don't know. They're playing a ram down here. I'm just gonna back and wait for the attention to go away because I can't go out right now, and we can't contest Drake, so I might as well just go for a back. All right, grab those. We're gonna grab the dagger. We're gonna grab that control ward this time because I think I need it. Um. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, your supercharge, you only want to use this basically either you can use it if you're going for like picking up a target that is out of position, then it can be really good to use it prior to using your ult. So let's say that Jin is overextending. You know, you can win one v one with her on him and you hit your plasma at, at long range. This allows you now to jump Jin, use your ult on Jin, and then you can prior to doing the jump but after hitting your w you use your supercharge and the reason for this is to get that additional attack speed and that can be really freaking useful uh, and can really ensure that you're going to win that one we won but of course if you're playing if you're doing this on a champ that has some kind of crowd control or, or oh, right here i'm going to use my ult to just i'm going to be able to get out oh it's going to be really close though that was scary. That was really scary. Can I please just leave me alone for a second? <laughs> All right, we're backing out. I don't know. This game is really weird. Um, but so far, we're just making sure that we don't die. And this is actually one of the key points of playing Kai'Sa is try to just play safe. If you come out of laning phase somewhat equal to the opposing bot lane, you're probably going to beat them late game. First of all, because you're a hyper carry, you absolutely shred anything. You're, you deal a ton of damage if you build her right. Secondly, even if you're just kind of equal and you're kind of struggling, then if you really learn how to play Kai'Sa correctly, then there is a point in time where you can actually go for dives on the enemy backline by using your W, using your ult, or even utilizing if you have another assassin on your team that has some kind of clan control that allows you to get some plasma onto the back line. Um, this is something really interesting. I'll see if I can show you in this game 
but I use this quite often, especially at lower elos to win games simply because even though my teammates are feeding some people, then the fact that that I I'm just sitting and waiting for the right moment and then I use my my old in on the, their back line and I absolutely shred them. That is a really nice way of just win, instantly winning the team fight. Uh, because, yeah, then there's only the front line left and makes it, yeah, pretty easy. But yeah, we'll see if I can show you throughout this game. So Kai'Sa, as I said, is a champ that you kind of kind of pick for for the late game. And uh, this is... Oh, oh no. I'm going to back out of this. I need some vision. I don't know where Sack is. I haven't seen him. Thing is, I'm gonna lose that control water already. Oh no! I literally walked into that. Can we? Can we please just kill him? Like we have LeBlanc coming up behind him. Okay. Well, I guess we are gonna be farming for a little while more because I honestly don't feel like I can set that much up right now. Do a little bit of damage here and there. Uh, we're getting close to finishing our Kraken Slayer. Sack is top, so that's not really a problem. There we go. Alright. So this is a really interesting game because I'm having a, a bit of a struggle right now setting anything up. Um, Trogath is not my preferred support. and That's something I'm used to playing with. Uh, so I have no clue how we're going to make this work, uh, except, oh. all right, so that is going to be a free kill. Oh, Cho. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> he just ate him. God damn it. <laughs> I know, I know, but come on. <laughs> all right, back out, dude. Back out. Uh, we're going to go back. We're going to grab ourselves our Kraken Slayer. And the Kraken Slayer is actually an insane power spike. All right. So hopefully this game can kind of roll back to a point where it uh, it's a little bit less random. So in the laning phase, you can, of course, win the little win the laning phase by killing the opposing team. I prefer when I play Kai'Sa, and I, I really suggest you do this, is play with something that can hard engage if you want to go for a kill lane. Something like a uh, Leona, a Nautilus, or something along those lines. Uh, a lot of other things can also work, but you really need some kind of um, support that has some utility to set up the kills for you. Uh, something like a Narmi can actually also really work. Uh, I, I would strongly suggest that you, that you try to avoid, if you don't feel comfortable playing against counters, then really try and avoid picking Kai'Sa into... Uh, into lane bullies like Draven, Severe especially is really difficult. Uh, Lucian, Misfortune is, I would say, one of the easier bullies to deal with. But oh, overall, like, try to avoid her into bullies because she has really short range compared to a lot of other ADCs. Um, and people are going to exploit that, or the bully champions are going to exploit that in early game for sure. All right, I'm just checking. We're going to get some free armor platings here. That is my priority. That's like getting free kills. Pretty much. Like, every armor plating is half a kill, so don't mind if I do. All right, we're going to grab that. Uh, sadly, we did not get the next plating. Drake's off. I'm going to shove this, and then I'm going to help with Drake. And we have a huge power spike because we got the Kraken Slayer. Kraken Slayer is so good on Kai'Sa. But what's even better is as soon as we have 1100 gold after Kraken Slayer, because that means we can buy this Serrated Dirk. I think that's how you pronounce it. And you might think, well, Serrated Dirk, that's only a component. Yes, it is. But here's the thing. That item is going to be enough for us to get the Carthian Rain upgraded, which is ridiculous. Like, once you get that, you literally pretty much double the ammo the missiles, Kai'Sa fires. So if you know how to position such that you only hit your like, like your target with the missiles, you deal pretty much double the damage. So really, really, like, this is a huge power spike whenever you can get it. I don't need to help Drake. I'm just going to get this farm instead. There's no point for me to go there because 
they're not getting challenged at all. Like, the enemy team won't be able to get there. We'll grab that. Um, I'm going to go for a back. I hope she's not going to interrupt me. I think not. Okay. Take that back. Totally plant that. <laughs> maybe, it was, maybe it was a little bit lucky. Kind of. All right. So, at this point, um, we're kind of slowly transitioning into the mid game. Generally speaking, we'll see a tower go down once the mid game starts. Um, right now, it seems like already at this point, people are kind of saying, okay, mid game is starting. Um, the reason for this is that our mid laner is bot side. So this means I can be mid. The thing is, my support doesn't really know this because I don't know. He's uh, doing his own thing. He's he's being choke ass. <laughs> I don't know. He's doing something. Um, but generally speaking, as soon as you've killed the turret in here, and generally speaking, you want to be going into the mid lane. And the reason why you want to be in the mid lane, and this is something you want to do on basically any ADC more or less, is that you are closer to all objectives, which is kind of huge. Like, close to all objectives means that you can help a lot faster. Also, you are closer. Like, the mid lane, believe it or not, is actually the safest lane to be in. This doesn't mean that it, it gets ganked less. It, it really doesn't. But it means that everybody else is closer to you, meaning that it's potentially, if your teammates are helping you, easier for you to survive because people are going to help you out. So this is kind of a huge thing. So generally, you want to be going into the mid lane. And as you are there, uh, your support is, of course, following you. Uh, you it's not doing the choke ass thing here. And when when this happens, you're in a great spot. You're close to Drake. You're close to Baron. Um, you're close to the most important line of towers, which is the mid towers. And the reason why these are the most important, because they open up the map the most. When you destroy this tower, you get more access to both bot and uh, uh, both the top and bot jungle. While if if you kill the other one, it or like if you kill top turret, it only gives you access to this, but it's a bit more limited, right? Okay, I need to back out. Oh shit! I forgot. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I forgot I had rift. Oh shit. <laughs> well, that was kind of a noob move. Well, he puts a barrel. I destroy it. Get the free gold. Uh, he's gonna go. For, ooh, he's gonna go for jump. If he goes for jump, he doesn't have it now. Nope. They are gonna kill the rift because I'm an idiot. But <laughs> okay. So what we can do here is this guy's. Why did he flash? Okay. I thought they were gonna re-engage. Okay, this is painful. I'm gonna back out of that. I think he's gonna look for another in. The thing is, I won't win against. Well, maybe with a bit of luck, I can win against Sack there, but he takes so long for me to kill, so I'm not going to. He's gonna get that. I'm gonna back out. I have a huge back here. Alright, so my plan with going top here was actually that I wanted to get this tower, but I didn't really easily get close because. I chose instead to just, you know what, actually, um, let's get that and just get that one. Um, because I kind of screwed it up, to be fair. Like, I could have, but I, I chose to throw the rift because I wanted to contest a ward, which I shouldn't contest, but we had fun with it. All right, so one of the things you want to think about on Kai'Sa is you're actually a pretty good duelist. You're a pretty good 1v1 champ. So even though my team is not really like... Uh, People are doing kind of random stuff. You're not useless. Like, you can still go for 1v1s. Oh, shit. I actually missed that. Um, you can still go for 1v1s with quite a lot of champs. You do need to be careful and you do need to be kind of mindful with what you do. But pretty often, you can use your W at range to basically hit the uh, opposing champion. And then you can jump in their face. 
Uh, you only want to use this combo where you W and ult to them if you are 100% sure that you win that fight. If you're not, then it's better to, or if you know it's pretty close, then it's better to run up close from some point where they don't have vision. Use your E to kind of move up close so you have that increased movement speed. And then have your ult for the like for when the fight starts because it's going to put you in a position where you can actually use your ult to maybe dodge one of gangplank's uh like what's it called barrels like you can do a lot of stuff with this right here i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna get some farm and i think i'm gonna take the mid wave because i see leblanc coming top and i rather be in mid i'm much much rather at this point uh sadly I see a cannon coming in here. A wild cannon appeared. A wild cannon disappeared again. Thank you. Um, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to kind of keep an eye out. I'm going to try and push this in a little bit. They are only two alive and I have vision on both. Oh, shit. If I hit that ult, I would have jumped. Or my, that W. Whoop. Grab that. Let's almost die to turret. <laughs> this is a weird game, by the way. Like, I'm not gonna lie. This is, this is a strange. Like, this doesn't happen in like in normal or in ranked games. That's for sure. All right, we'll grab that. Um, and that one, and we'll start going down into lane. I'm gonna grab myself the wolves on the way. I think. Let's see. No, wait. I just run here. The thing is, I don't think they're going to get much more out of this, but I'm going to go down there just because I think this game is so random. All right, so let's talk team fighting. So team fighting on Kai'Sa is not only extremely fun because it's very diverse. Um, generally, you're going to play her as a normal ADC, stand on the back line, just hit whatever's closest to you. This is something especially for if you are a newer, newer ADC, if you're below plat, this is what you should do. Um, as you reach maybe a, like end gold, you can start thinking more about utilizing your uh, your abilities and your ult to reach their backline. You only want to do this in very specific scenarios because it is kind of risky. I'm kind of waiting for him. This guy's dumb. Right here, we're gonna go for that backline. I'm just drop him. Use my heal. Nice. And Cho's going to grab some of that. He's just going to eat it. Like going McDonald's. He gets big real quick. And my team, as we totally killed most of the enemy team, they, of course, do the right thing. And they all back out. So now we are in a... Oh, nope. Nope. Uh, we're, of course, in a scenario where we can't really push. We could have gotten free and hit. But again, like the game would be too easy if people did the things they were supposed to, right? Um, so instead, I'm going to do the second best thing, which is clear out their jungle. And the reason why this is good is, of course, because by killing things in their jungle, I'm removing neutral objectives that would give them gold. I'm getting gold. So generally, like, I'm, it's a win-win for me. And they lose a lot. So taking enemy jungle, good thing. Uh, and I might as well do that if I have no, no good reason to back out. All right, right here, I'm going to go for a split push. I guess. Whoop, I'm going to grab that. Nope. Nope. I think this guy's going to get a little sick of me. My team just basically aced them. All right, so let's go for a duel on this guy. Nope. Nope. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Come on. This is fun. Right? This is fun. He's really trying. Like he's sitting there being like barrel. And I'm like, no. Barrel. No. <laughs> that was pretty fun. <laughs> Alright, so this turned out to be kind of a random game. Um, but it was really fun. Something I just really quickly want to say is of course in the late game, when you're pushing objectives like turrets, it can be a little difficult on Kaisa. One of the reasons for this, of course, she has really short range. So what you want to do is walk back and forth to kind of uh Hit the turret, but not stand still and just auto it because people are really quickly going to go to you. You 
much rather be safe. So don't go for a hit on a turret if it puts you in a situation where somebody's going to jump jump your face. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope you learned a thing or two from this video or at least had a bit of fun. I really did. I really enjoyed this. If you did uh, in any way, make sure to smash the like button. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. It really would mean the world to me. And uh, yeah, lastly, if you want to watch me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live while I push the microphone away. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is going to be it for this time. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.